Well, welcome everybody along to introduction to SharePoint 2000, uh, SharePoint on SBS 2008. Uh, I hope everybody can hear me and uh, all ready to start. So again, if you have any questions, uh, type them into the question box in the lower right hand corner of the screen there and um, let's just get started. So. Again, my name is Robert Crane. Uh, my business is the Computer Information Agency. Uh, the website that you can find details about my business is at www.ciaops.com and uh, there you'll be able to provide me with any feedback or information that you want to. So with that said, uh, let's get started. So let's have a look at what is SharePoint on SBS 2008. Uh, firstly, uh, the SharePoint version that's running on SBS 2008 is uh, version 3. This is different from the version that was running with SBS 2003, which was version 2. So again, this is the latest version available with SharePoint. Okay, another important thing to remember about SharePoint on SBS 2008 is that by default uh, with the installation, both the data and the programs reside on the C drive. Now the SBS 2008 wizards do allow you to move that data from the C drive to another drive, but again it's important to remember that by default that data is on the C drive. So as more and more information is put into uh, SharePoint by the users, then the space consumed on the C drive which is obviously your system drive, uh, will in increase. So again, this could be an issue and it's something to be aware of. It's important that you consider this when setting up the system because you don't want to find out later in the piece that the C drive is filling up. So it's much better to set up the system and then move the SharePoint databases immediately using the SPS wizard. All the data with SharePoint on SBS 2008 is stored in SQL 2005 Embedded Edition. This is different from the original MSDE databases which were part of SBS 2003. There are a number of advantages with the Embedded Edition. Firstly, it has no database limit. This means that the SharePoint databases can grow to any size um, and without any issues, whereas MSDE previously was limited to a 4 gig limit in size. The downside to the embedded edition is that it can't be upgraded um, and generally is difficult to maintain. However, a number of GUI tools have been loaded on SBS 2008 which allow it to be managed much more easily. The other thing to remember with SBS so with SharePoint on SBS 2008 is that things like Office 2007 files, so the DOCX, the XLSX, PDFs, etc., are not automatically indexed. There are a number of steps that you need to follow, a number of registry changes that need to be done, as well as the installation of something called iFilters to allow the indexing of this information. So again, unfortunately out of the box, uh, using the latest files, can result in them not being indexed, which can be uh, very, uh, can prevent the uh, easy uptake of SharePoint on SBS 2008. So they're just some basic points. So what I'll do now is we'll just swap in, swap over to the actual file server and we can have a look at our standard company web on SPS 2008. So again, when we open Company Web on any workstation within our network, what we see is basically this page. So down the side you've got the menu, shared documents, fact center, calendar, tasks, archive emails and photos. And across the top you've got the tab. And if you're logged in as an administrator, you will have this option up here called Site Actions, which we'll come to. So if you have a look down the left hand side, you'll see that there are two differences between Company Web uh, on SBS 2008 to a normal SharePoint installation. The first is this Fact Center. 
So the idea behind the fax centre is, is that when you configure an SBS 2008 system, you can configure it so that faxes are automatically routed to company web. So they will appear in here, which makes it much easier to share with all members of the business. The other thing that is different, you'll notice here under sites, is a site called archive emails. So again, what you can do is you can configure SBS to have um, emails, certain emails, archived into this area within company web. Again, this is a subsite. So again, it allows you to have all that email archived, indexed and available to all members of your team. So again, the standard features that we've got that are part of any SharePoint installation are shared documents. Okay, so what I can do in here is I can just go in and I can upload a document into my SharePoint library. And as you can see, it will appear in the library along with the standard fields of modified and modified by. Okay, I have the ability to create calendar items. Again, I can create a shared calendar. So I can go in here and I can go uh, webinar and have a number of options in there. And again, you'll see it appear as an item in my calendar. Likewise, I can set up tasks for people to complete. But as you can see, generally, uh, it's a pretty bland installation. There's not much here on the front page except for announcements and obviously a link to the calendar. So again, out of the box, it doesn't really catch the eye. Now let's have a look at how we would administer SharePoint on SBS 2008. The first place to go is what's known as the central administration. So again, this is a website, a SharePoint website, which you will find under Start, Administrative Tools, SharePoint 3 Central Administration. So what you'll notice is, is there are three tabs, Home, Operations, Application Management. So again, if we click on the Operations tab, we will come, we'll be presented with a number of options that are required for the SharePoint installation. So again, these are based on typically the topology of SharePoint. And remember that SharePoint can operate on standalone machines. It can also operate on farms as well. So there can be multiple servers involved. However, in the case of SBS 2008, by default, the installation has been completed in a standalone mode, which means that it is not upgradable to a multi-server farm generally. Okay, so these are our operations, and again, if we click on the application management, we'll notice a number of other tabs. So again, if we want to see what our content databases are, our content databases refer to where the information is actually stored for uh, the SharePoint. So when users store their information and their documents into SharePoint, they end up in the content database. Now, the content database is as we said, an SQL embedded database. And in this case, it's called Shared Web DB. And as you can see, it's started and running. But again, if I click on it, give me more information about the actual database. Again, this will indicate uh, a number of options that we can set. One of the most important to make sure that is set, and it is set by default, is that the Windows SharePoint Services Search Server is set here. So in some cases you may have issues with search and that may not be enabled. So again, just go in there and check that. So again, we can move between items in SharePoint generally via the tabs or the navigation down the left-hand side. But you'll also notice that there is something known here as breadcrumb navigation. So as you can see, I'm in central administration, application management, and then content databases. So if I wanted to move back to the home page, I can simply click that link in the breadcrumb navigation and navigate the same way. So again, if I go back to my company web and I go into shared documents, you'll see that across the top again, I get this breadcrumb navigation. So this makes it much easier for users to navigate around the SharePoint site. 